Hey everyone, I thought I'd give you an update on my cookie machine project. So I don't know if you saw the first video, but I've basically got this carousel sort of uh, device that I've rigged up, and each station on the carousel is going to have one of the ingredient components uh, to make a chocolate chip cookie. And the challenge, one of the biggest challenges with this project is handling all the different types of ingredients. Every station looks pretty different because all the ingredients have different uh, properties to them that, that require a different dispensing method. So I figure I'll go through them briefly and then describe uh, what I got done over the last few days. This will be the station that dispenses chocolate chips. So the chips will be stacked in here and as you rotate this, um, a specified quantity of chocolate chips will be dispensed out the bottom. The trick is that this volume is a little bit too big right now, so what I'm going to do is just add some solid plastic between the fins on that sort of butterfly valve. Uh, that way when this thing comes around it'll pick up a smaller subset of chips but uh, still dispense a, a specified number each time. This will be the dispenser for brown sugar. Uh, brown sugar is probably one of the most difficult to dispense ingredients or materials that I've ever seen. It's sticky, it's granular, it's also not very um, free-flowing, like it's, it's, um, it becomes solid, like if you leave it in a cup, you can actually turn the cup upside down and it's all packed together. So all these properties make brown sugar very difficult to deal with. So I'm going to use the same trick that I used with the chocolate chips. I'm going to sort of pack that butterfly valve up with more plastic. And the trick is as it rotates around, it actually has sort of like a grinding action. So if the, all the brown sugar up here is packed, as this thing turns around, the fins kind of chip off a little bit of it. So as this, you know, it may not get exactly the right amount, but we're going to be using the balance to, to actually measure the amount of ingredients that have come out. So what I can do is just make the volume in between fins smaller and smaller, and just use more rotations to get enough total volume out. Some of the easier to deal with ingredients are, say, the sugar. So this is granular, but it's pretty free-flowing. And so the method I'm going to use for both sugar and salt is a, um, a helical screw, I mean a drill bit in this case. This is a, a high helix angle drill bit. And there's a, there's a chamber in, in here that looks about like this, so that when the drill bit turns counterclockwise, it pulls a little bit of the uh, salt in this case out, and there's a dispensing port on the bottom. I'm using tape just to hold this together for now. What I need is a little pulley system, which I've already ordered the parts for. Uh, but the the motor speeds and the volume within the drill bits and everything have already been tested, so these work. The flour I initially had some problems with too, until I found just a small sifter that I could put in my um, carousel like this. So with a really slow motor, the high gear ratio, it just turns the sifter and it uh, dispenses a surprisingly consistent amount of flour per revolution of the sifter. Uh, this will be for the eggs. Uh, someone asked if I was going to do egg yolks and egg whites separately. No, but that's a good idea. Uh, in this case what I'm going to do is just beat the eggs together and put the blended eggs into this syringe. Uh, dispensing the liquids is super easy compared to the powders and the uh, brown sugar and all that stuff. This will be for the vanilla extract same deal as the eggs pretty much. This will be for the butter. Uh, the reason I'm using a metal syringe uh, for the butter with this other apparatus is that it has to be temperature controlled and, and it also is going to be experiencing much higher pressures in the syringe. So this metal syringe was needed because I didn't want the, the glass to break. So that leaves two unpopulated stations here. One of them is going to be for baking soda and the other is going to be for a mixer, which I may or may not implement in this first version. So the idea is that the carousel would turn around, uh, dispense an ingredient on the scale, you know, turn to the next station, dispense that ingredient, and then turn to the mixer station. And the mixer station would actually go down into the, into the cup and mix the ingredients together. I think for this first shot what I'll do is just, you know, have the thing a little bit more user involvement. So it'll dispense the ingredients and then say, okay, mix those together, and then dispense three more ingredients and say, okay, mix those together, or something. But um, I'll see how much time I have. I've been working a bit on the firmware and the UI, 
and I think I'm going to use processing.org for the UI just because it's so quick and easy. I've already got a, a simple GUI over there, and if I put some pressure on the scale, you can see it's already feeding the values through the serial port into the computer there. So I'm going to come up with a simple packetized serial protocol, and the computer will basically be driving the microcontroller. It'll send commands like, you know, dispense five grams of flour, and then the microcontroller will handle the loop between the, the motor drive and the scale, and then send back an OK. And probably what will happen is, you know, the target value will be 5.00 grams, and it'll actually get 5.05, or whatever I end up getting. And so the microprocessor can, can uh, send the actual value back to the GUI. So all of the stations here have been tested except for the brown sugar and the chocolate chips and, and the baking soda. So once I get those straightened out, I'll be fairly confident that I can dispense uh, you know, about the right amount of each material and do that in a fairly controlled manner you know, with the computer and all that stuff working. I, I think that'll be just fine. Uh, the major uncertainties left are the mixing. Like I say, it might be done by a human. And um, the mechanics involved with, with moving this um, carousel around. I'm planning to attach a gray code to the side of this uh, white Delrin collar here and then put a, a four-channel optical reader on there and then drive this around with just a DC motor and implement another servo loop in the microcontroller. I don't think that'll be too hard. I think that'll actually work out fine. And seeing this thing whip around automatically will be uh, pretty impressive. Okay, see you next time. Bye.